chill artwork. There are colors which radiate with a brilliant light. They only grow more exquisite with repeated applications. Art, a beauty unique to East Asia. Sprinkling gold powder. Art is a unique varnish acquired from nature, which is applied for an elegant sheen. This creates beautiful artwork which displays the care and spirit of humanity. Mother of Pearl. It is endured through time, remaining unchanged for 10,000 years. This is a world filled with light that shines magnificently throughout time and space. Art is the epitome of art, and it was born from the traditional culture of East Asia. Daisan has deep valleys where even the clouds rest before they scatter. Here lies a small hermitage which was established during the Silla dynasty where preparations to greet the Buddha are underway. Artisan Osejong delicately applies a hemp cloth on the Buddhist followers who reached the ultimate stage of enlightenment. This is called backing. In order to prevent the wood from distortion or cracks, this Raimi cloth is applied to the wood with a coat of art. Once the sculpture is nearly completed, a coat of art is applied to the image. Then the backing is done, and this is then followed by a covering of art sap. We don't use black art, instead we use clear art, which preserves the grain. An adhesive made with art sap and glutinous rice fastens the Raimi cloth to the image. Backing is done in order to create the base for the art to set well. The image was carved from pine wood, and pine wood has a strong grain, so it bursts open easily. After it gains and loses moisture, it tends to rupture. However, art prevents the moisture from seeping through, so it helps to prevent the wood from cracking. This is why otting is done frequently. Korea's ancestors have always used wood to make many things, including houses, furniture, and bowls. However, since wood is hardly a sturdy material, ochu can help make up for some of the wood's deficiencies. Coating increases the wood's durability. It also reveals the grain of the wood, adding more aesthetic value to each and every piece. Out of the whole world, East Asia is the only country that practices otting. Cutlery and tableware enhanced with ot were normal, everyday items in Korea, China, and Japan. Although the application method, materials, and colors used are different in every country, each method of otting alike reinforces the durability of the piece. Korea's process of otting advanced tremendously during the Goryeo dynasty. Ocho ware made with precision and an extravagant sense of style and inlaid with mother of pearl flourished during that time. The royal court even promoted the planting of ot trees and imposed taxes on them. Ot sap, 
which accentuated the natural beauty of wood, was developed during the Joseon dynasty. People sought simple beauty rather than the fancy patterns that were made for noblemen. The general public in Korea was actually not able to acquire ochil ware for use in their daily lives. If you examine the records from the Joseon dynasty, you'll see that the government kept a strict management register, which was used to prohibit the masses from collecting ought. The artisans who worked with ought or mother of pearl were supervised by the government. You could say that mother of pearl ochil ware was a luxury item used only by the upper class. Wonju is considered the birthplace of the best Korean ought. The ought trees throughout the nation are good, but the ones in Wonju are thought of as the very best. It's because the moisture gathers well here, thanks to the even formation of the mountain ranges. Also, the wood grows thicker here, by comparison, because Wanju has four very distinct seasons. The outer skin grows thicker here because of the cold. Our rot doesn't come from the inside of the wood, but from the skin, so it has more thickness and volume than other ots, which makes it superb. Ot with an ivory shade oozes out when a long scratch is made in the ot tree. It is then collected with a spatula knife. There are five types of coatings, June-July ot, August ot, September ot, then scratched ot and cut ot. Several types of ot can be acquired from this single tree. Rather than just one type of ot with one color, we will have a certain type in the beginning, a different type the second time, another type the third time, and so on and so on. In June and July, the ot yields a lot of moisture. We are able to collect up to five sessions of June-July ot because of that moisture. The best quality of ot, one that is fit for crafts, is found in the 6th through the 15th sessions. Why does ot make the surface of the wood more durable and resistant to decay? Recently, art has been studied and analyzed for its possible uses by scientists. This art, passed down from Korean ancestry, is proving even more valuable than originally thought. This mixture has had the glycoprotein and polysaccharide removed, but it still contains urushiol. We are now going to separate the urushiol from the rest of the components. Urushiol makes up 70% of the ot. It is colorless and clear at first. But when it comes into contact with the air, it turns black due to the oxidative enzymes. The main component of ot is urushiol. The glucose, protein, polysaccharide, enzymes, and water make up 20 to 30 percent of the rest. When ot is applied, the high content of urushiol molecules prevent moisture, and the polysaccharide keeps out oxygen, therefore preventing oxidization. A sturdy coat is formed on the surface of the wood or metal. This adds luster and makes it impervious to change. In other words, the chemical structure of urushiol is what determines the quality of the ot. This is the hydrogen nuclear resonance spectrum, and it helps us observe chemical structures. If there is an abundance of a certain component, it will cause certain physical effects. This work will verify that. High quality urushiol is armed with sturdier binding power and adhesive strength. This causes an increase of shine and a shortening of drying time.
The reason behind the incorrodible quality of the ot can also be found in the urushiol. We used a series of ceramic cups to test the ot's strength against bacteria. We poured the same amount of water and the exact same amount of bacteria into both a regular ceramic cup and additional cups with varying coatings of urushiol. There is one ceramic bowl with no coat, and another bowl with one coat, then two coats, and three coats. Then we add a set amount of bacteria according to the coats. A million bacteria were added and cultivated. After the cultivation, we check to see whether the bacteria has increased or decreased on a daily basis. They are cultivated for 120 hours. A flat cloth is then placed in a petri dish, and the water bacteria solution from the ceramic cup is added to the dish using a pipette. After 120 hours of cultivation, we check to see how much bacteria has grown. We wonder if any changes in the amount of bacteria occurred. If you look at the statistics on the graph for the ceramic ware, the bacteria has decreased by more than 10 times. With one coat of arushiol, the bacteria in the regular ceramic bowl did not differ much from the original count. But in the bowl with three coats, the number of bacteria was extremely low. When did Korea's ancestors start to use ought in their daily lives? Artifacts that were excavated beside the ancient tombs of Dahori Changwon provided the answer to that question. Traces of ought were discovered in most of the artifacts, including weaponry, as well as items that would have been used in daily living. Thanks to these artifacts, the history of Odding is assumed to be about 2,000 years old. We assume that the artifacts found near Dahori Changwon are from 1st century BC to 1st century AD. The fact that many of these items contained ot shows how ware was prevalent throughout this era, that it was used in the making of items for war as well as for rituals suggests that ot had multiple applications. Ot, a natural paint, was applied to the daily use items that needed to remain sturdy. Afterwards, these unique items were called ochilware. Woodenware is what the wood before the application of ot is called. Ot is applied to the interior and exterior surface of the woodenware. A watery coat of ot sap is applied. Then it's dried for a couple of days and rubbed with sandpaper more than eight times. Then a clear, reddish shine appears. The ot sap, when it is dried and absorbed, causes the wood to become resistant to moisture and it gains antiseptic properties. We consider this clear shine, adhesiveness, and sturdiness to be very valuable. Ot is a natural paint, so it is entirely harmless to the human body. It has great adhesiveness, and its scent is also pleasant. I think that is why otting is used so often. The woodenware is first coated more than eight times with ot sap. Then, a glutinous rice glue is added to the ot sap in the ratio of one to one. This is called hotchil glue. This hotchil glue is mandatory when applying ot. It is spread evenly over the entire surface of the wood. Afterwards, cloth is added. This prevents the wood from expanding or shrinking, and it facilitates the application of ot. Not 
Not a single process is overlooked, and each and every principle is kept. This is how a strong and beautiful work of art is created. That is the conviction and philosophy of artisan Lee Hyung Man. The thing that creates the best colors for the mother of pearl is none other than the dark ot. The color of the mother of pearl work can be enhanced depending on what type of ot you decide to use. It was none other than this mother of pearl work that made Lee Hyung Man join the ranks of world renowned artists. Mother of pearl is also called nacre. It is a craft in which the shells of abalone and clams are cut according to a pattern and attached very close to each other. This type of delicate and extravagant form of mother of pearl artwork has prospered since the Goryeo dynasty. Because Korea is surrounded by seas on three sides, high quality natural mother of pearl is easy to obtain. Therefore, here, this form of artwork has been able to thrive best in comparison to that of other East Asian nations. Lustering is the process in which the shells of abalone or conch are used to form the mother of pearl. It is the most basic step for this work. There are many ways that a pattern can be created. Severing, which is the most classic method of creating nacre, is when the nacre is cut into thread-like pieces and applied to woodenware to create unique patterns. The pieces are cut according to a pre-designed plan, using a fret saw or scissors, and then a technique called creasing is done using a file. This method is commonly used for patterns, because several pieces can be cut at once, and realistic and delicate designs can be achieved. With the introduction of the fret saw in the 1900s, small and intricate patterns could be made even more easily. It began in the unified Silla dynasty, but has developed over the years. The mother of pearl work with natural patterns was greatly influenced by the technique of inlaying. Though the patterns were simpler and smaller during the Goryeo dynasty, they grew much larger during the Joseon dynasty. Mother of Pearl Nacre is meticulous and difficult to manufacture, as it requires at least 100 work sessions before its completion. The paper containing the Mother of Pearl is attached, with an iron heated to between 60 and 70 degrees Celsius. Mother of Pearl is first applied to the paper sketch. Then glue is applied to the wood, and the paper with Mother of Pearl is connected. This is why months are required to complete one piece. The power of heat is used to fasten the Mother of Pearl to the piece. If the iron is too hot during this step, the Mother of Pearl may burn. So the artist must pay very close attention. Once the mother of pearl is securely attached, the glue on the wood must be removed with hot water. Water of 40 degrees Celsius soaks through the paper, and when the paper is peeled off, the mother of pearl is revealed. Artisan Lee Hyung Man uses a file to test the individual mother of pearl patterns, but the most important step still awaits him. In this step, the art is applied to the nacre and then shaved and polished. The mother of pearl now has a beautiful clear sheen and is finally complete. Six months 
is the minimum amount of time it takes to complete one piece. Large artwork often requires at least three years to complete. Mother of Pearl artwork is born out of long periods of hard work at the hands of the artisans. The clear and beautiful shine that captures the light represents the tradition and pride of Koreans. The Japanese also take great pride in their otting. Toshogu Shrine, which was designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, has eight buildings that are Japan's national treasures. Ot artisans from all over the nation were recruited to work on them. Toshogu Shrine was made in 1627 after the death of Tokugawa Ieyasu in 1616. Tokugawa Ieyasu is enshrined in Nikko. It took a decade to construct this shrine, in which the remains of Tokugawa Ieyasu are buried. Yomeiman Gate, the main gate, was restored to resemble its original form. eaves were decorated with gold and the vivid sculptures were completed with art and paint. We don't know what it was like in 1617, but this building was constructed in 1636 and everything was Achil from then on. During those 20 years, the humidity level in Nikko was extremely high, so after some research, they must have decided to apply art in order to preserve the building better. After the third plan, made in 2003, there are still many years of restoration in process. But after numerous years have gone by, the many coats of black ot and gilt that were used still boast a majestic presence. The Tokugawa shogunate must have wanted to use this classy black color in order to demonstrate its authority. And the people themselves must have decided on using the method of otting to preserve it longer. Even before this large-scale restoration process, the multicolored Dangchong was repaired and covered with art each 20 years over the centuries. All of these processes were recorded inside the building. This is the back plate for the rafters, and it's attached like this. In the building, this sits between the rafters. When everything is put together, only this part shows. When the repairs were done in the 1960s, the number of repairs were recorded. Fourteen repair sessions were done. The painting was also done 14 times. Japan learned their Dengchon skills from Korea during the Three Kingdoms period. They designed unique Dengchon based on art and gilt for over a millennium. It is here that Japan's Deng Chong skills bloomed. The restoration work is still in session. Ochil is the process which requires the most attention. In order to manifest the black clear luster to its fullest, not one single thing can be missed. It was during similar restoration sessions in the past that the skills of art artisans could be passed on to the younger generation. 
This is the reason that this 17th century building could be preserved. Even the condition of the coating can go bad. After 20 years, not the base, but the surface can become degraded, so more coats are necessary to repair the work. 20 years ago, people didn't live as long as they do now. So young artisans were able to become directors just 20 years after first learning how to do the work. 20 years was the most advantageous cycle for replacements. Japan's art artisans stress the importance of history and tradition. They try to use the tools and materials from the Edo period on the restoration. They want to preserve the 350-year-old method for this unique type of work. This building, which has existed in the same form for hundreds of years, is the best school and teacher for learning artisan skills. And such tradition is what makes Japan the best nation for art today. because wood is still so commonly used in our lives? Out of all of the countries in East Asia today, Japan is where you will encounter the most various art artwork on everyday items. In 18th and 19th century Europe, including England, the Netherlands, Portugal, and Japan, Japan's ochreware was called Japan, and European royalty valued and admired it greatly. This is why real ochreware from Japan was called Japan, and work with alternative paint was called Japaning. Notice that when the first letter of Japan is not capitalized, it stands for Odding. Japan is very passionate about their Odding. November 3rd of every year is designated as Ochil Day. The government has implemented various policies on sponsoring young Ot artisans so that traditional Odding technology will be passed on. The government has deemed Mr. Morose a national treasure and an important intangible property. He is given around $20,000 each and every year in order to train young students. The art he uses in his work is always Japanese art sap. For the first step, Mr. Morose puts on several coats of thick art. What Mr. Morose is especially famous for is a traditional Japanese odding method called makie. In makie, shapes are created with a makie brush. Painting is used to create these shapes. Pictures are created by using a file on sprinkled gold powder, which is then hardened. This is done on art before it sets. The name makie was developed by combining the words maki, which means sprinkle, and e, which means picture. Makie is a unique Japanese odding method in which a picture is created with art, 
using sprinkled powder in several shades, including gold. This technique was born in the Heian period, but blossomed in the Edo period because it was greatly favored by the noblemen. It became the classic odding method of Japan. Since highly developed skills are required to produce a finished makie picture, young artists must train and practice for many years. A bamboo cylinder and brushes of different thicknesses are used to sprinkle gold powder and draw fine lines. A lot of time must be allowed between the sprinkling and the drawing. But since odding requires a long period of time to dry, there is no rush. The paint and gold blend together, creating a softer gold color because the particles are only sprinkled. This color is closer to the shade that the Japanese people like. That is why makie has become so popular. The unique texture and delicate sheen not only captured the hearts of the Japanese, but also the world. Mr. Morose works hard to embody a sense of nature and life in his artwork. To him, odding is more than technique or tradition. He believes that when the heart and soul of the artisan is expressed in the work, it better embodies the tradition that Japan so wishes to preserve. In the beginning, there was only a technique, but since the ability to incorporate one's feelings and sentiments in a creation also needed to be passed down, unique techniques were born and grew to be more commonly used in modern life. This is what Japan's national human treasure system is all about. China is one of the East Asian nations that adopted odding early on. Traditional Chinese buildings even embody traces of odding. Paint repair work is being done on the pillars and doors of the Forbidden City. This red ot is indicative of China's odding culture. Chinese people love the color red. During the spring festival or national holidays, red signifies the happy occasions. That's why red-colored art is favored by the Chinese. They love it. Yin Zhi Yun, China's model art craftsman, has been working for 40 years in this workshop in Beijing. Several coats of art are applied to the wood, and shapes are engraved in the colored artwork with a knife. This method was created 1,400 years ago in Beijing. Fifty, 
100, or even 500 coats of ought are applied to create a very thick layer. Colored ought is made by painting ought sap with a certain hue. Then it's combined with several other materials. For example, shapes made with metal, wood, ceramic and cloth will have several coats of the ought paint applied to them. Three thousand trees are needed to yield one kilogram of ought sap. However, it takes ten times more ought to create a single piece of colored ought artwork. The color shows up differently on contrasting materials, but red and black are the most common hues. The paint must be thick. Only when it reaches a certain thickness can engravings be made. I have never seen more detailed engravings anywhere in comparison to what I've seen on colored art. Furthermore, there are 50 to 60 different types of sketches. Such engravings cannot be produced in any other material besides colored art. The paint is applied repeatedly to add volume, and it takes a long time to dry between each of the hundreds of applications. After 100 coats of the art, the thickness only comes to three millimeters. Colored art requires so much time and effort that it can be too much for one single person. The sheen disappears if I work with paint once a day and then miss two days. Then I have to shave the outer layer off and add the sheen all over again. It's the same with engraving. When you're engraving, you can't take a break. It must be completed in three months. Otherwise, it must be discarded. It takes more people to do the painting than the odding. This is a manual industry factory, which helps produce colored artwork with Miss Yin Ji Yun. China's tourists adore the art souvenirs that are made here. The most important Chinese region for producing art chillware was Beijing. However, after the Qing Dynasty, auding skills were made public and manual industry factories were established. Many of these factories are now closed due to their inability to adapt to a free market economy. Beijing has become a world-renowned city, but the odding that Chinese people saw in their younger years exists only as a memory in their hearts. When I was young, my mother did artwork. So I grew up watching colored art being made. After I became an adult, the world changed very fast, but I still wanted to do a more creative job. So I set up a workshop with Miss Yin. So, you see, I have worked with colored ocho wear my entire life. Up until the 21st century, there were no more than 20 artisans who could do colored artwork. The government only started to support this work around 10 years ago. Colored art artisans were registered on the National Intangible Property Protection List in 2006. The colored art artisans of China are pouring all of their effort and hard work into making the new art artwork prosper.
Even in Vietnam, which is known to be very humid, ought was a useful everyday item and construction material. The act of decorating a bowl with ought is a long-standing tradition. But when art school was established in 1925 under French colonization, traditional ought work and the Western painting method were mingled together. Western-style pictures mixed with Eastern ought are a popular tourist item. This is a village comprised entirely of young artists and craftsmen. These young artisans are making Ochil paintings, which are called Son Mai. Son means to paint, and Mai means to grind and make flat. Literally, it stands for a painting created with ground ought. This term was invented only 30 years ago. Ought sap and glue are mixed and applied evenly onto a flat piece of wood. The wood is then covered with a thin layer of cloth. This is the backing step. This preparation for otting resembles that of Korea. Next, a soft sawdust is applied with sandpaper in order to fill in any gaps or holes. Several coats of ought are applied. This results in a black but very glossy sheen. This thick layer of ought must be smoothed over with soft sandpaper. After the process of oughting, sanding, and washing are repeated three times, an ought canvas is finally complete. The process is complicated, but much work must be done in order to achieve the color that is needed. This was originally a village that produced traditional wooden dolls and tableware. But the craftsmen in this village readily accepted the new trend of Ochil. This Achil village was formed 200 years ago. Achil was done in its more traditional form 40 to 50 years ago, but for about the last 20 to 30 years, the old way has been infiltrated with modern techniques, and now the modern and the traditional coexist. It is not simply paintings made of ought and dye. Just like Japan's makie, where metal powder is sprinkled before the ochil dries, the traditional odding methods of various countries are being displayed on a canvas to create a new world of art. Even during the painting process, drying has to be done simultaneously. Before applying a different color, the previous color must be completely dry. It becomes difficult to assume what kind of painting will result after several steps of painting, drying, and painting again. Vietnam's traditional odding method was to apply a thin coat and add sheen. But now, Ochil paintings are produced using several thick coats which are polished. Ot 
pot, which was previously used primarily to decorate or protect things, now also works nicely as a new material for art and paintings. Artisans hope to support and develop the new future of Vietnam's Ho Chi Minh. The hope is small, yet significant. When I am arting, I am also creating. I've had 50 years of experience doing this, so I am second to no one. Ho Chi Minh, which created a new form. By keeping traditional methods while accepting modern ones, has spread from Vietnam throughout East Asia in a new and different way. The owner of the small hermitage in Mount Odaisan is slowly revealed. A Buddha statue is mandatory in every temple. Gilding is the process of clothing an important figure in art and guilt. This process is definitely a war between care and time. One coat of art takes about 21 days to apply. The steps of applying and drying have to be repeated over nine times. The art for the Buddha's body is also expensive. Art sap with an ivory hue is one guan. This means 3.75 kilograms, 132.3 ounces, costs three thousand dollars. 375 kilograms of gold have been used in the gilding for the Buddha temple. Both art and pure gold are used in the gilding because the art has good adhesive quality and can protect the wood well. So art and gold together create a very strong layer. It also lasts for a long time. The wooden Buddha is gilded with traditional art, as per artisan Oh Se Jong's request. The Buddha has a golden hue that is both subtle and elegant due to the skillfully applied art. As the years go by, it will greet visitors with a bright and shiny luster. Artisan Oh Se Jong is finishing up his task, while the gilded Buddha is seated comfortably. The lenient smile on Buddha's face comes alive when the eye lines are filled with a delicate touch, and the minute gaps are smoothed away. This is the last stage of art gilding. After the object leaves the artisan's hands, is the art gilding complete? Ochil was realized in quiet beauty, but will once again acquire the hues of nature. It is a bright beauty that intensifies with more applications. The subtle sheen of art, which has been with us for over 2,000 years, continues to light up our hearts. <laughs>